Let's go to Philadelphia. Joining us from there is Mark Fallon, who is the former director of the Criminal Investigative Task Force at Guantanamo Bay. Uh, good to have you on the show. Um, President Joe Biden, when announcing al Zawahiri's killing, said uh, people around the world no longer need to fear the vicious and determined killer. Do you feel that this statement by the U.S. president is totally accurate? I mean, doesn't it open the door to possibly uh, for possible reprisals? Yeah, it definitely opens the door to reprisals. We need to see what the Doha agreement uh, violations might be, both on the part of the Taliban government and on the part of the United States. Uh, this, this may be a symbolic victory for the United States, and I certainly hope that it does bring some sense of closure to the victims of the East African embassy bombings, uh, the USS Cole bombing, uh, and the 9-11 bombings. Uh, but, but whether this will have a significant impact on the global violent extremist movement is yet to be determined. Mark, since you mentioned the Doha Agreement, uh, we know that Ayman uh, al-Zawahri was living in downtown Kabul when he was killed by U.S. drone strike. I mean, let's not forget that the Taliban had agreed during these talks in Doha not to host terrorists. I mean, clearly, this was not the case. What does this say to you? Yeah, it says to me that we're not sure what's going on over there in, in Afghanistan. Uh, this comes a year after the withdrawal. And, and it, after 20, it took us 20 years to find, fix, and finish uh, Ayman al-Zawahri. Uh, and, and so we really need to determine what our relationship is with the Taliban, what the involvement is of the Haqqani uh, network within the Taliban infrastructure. Let's not forget that many of those Haqqani network uh, fighters uh, were products of Guantanamo, had been previously Guantanamo detainees. Uh, and, and so we really need to see what the conditions are on the ground are now. Uh, you know, to, to 20 years uh, post 9-11. You spent a lot of time uh, with, with uh, the, the, the Guantanamo case. I mean, when you look at sort of um, uh, what uh, al-Zawahiri represented, he was an older, uh, he represented an older uh, generation of, 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 of this movement, and many of the people who were in Guantanamo Bay were much younger. What do you think the leadership is going to be looking like um, after the killing of, of al-Zawahiri? Well, well it, it's hard to say right now because uh, uh, Zawahari uh, really didn't have much control over the al-Qaeda franchise. Uh, Al-Qaeda franchise post 9-11, uh, and you had these other al-Qaeda-like groups. Uh, he lost control of ISIS uh, and others, uh, lost control of a lot of the terrorist financing and recruitment uh, to other groups. Uh, and, and so to me, uh, this is a symbolic victory for the United States. Uh, but but I, I'm concerned and troubled uh, by the statements of the Biden administration about Zawahiri's role as a mastermind in the 9-11 and USS Cole attacks. If you look at the 9-11 Commission report, uh, there's little mention of uh, Zawahiri's involvement there. Not, now, he certainly was the number two of al-Qaeda. Uh, but as far as a mastermind, every time we seem to kill someone with a drone, we seem to claim that they are some type of mastermind, yet we have people on trial at Guantanamo Bay before this military commission process that the government claims are masterminds of some of these attacks. Uh, so the U.S. government is going to have to decide which is it, because if Zawahiri was a mastermind of those attacks, that evidence needs to be provided to the prosecutors and defense counsel at Guantanamo to utilize in those military commission proceedings. Right, okay. Mark Brown, thank you very much for joining us here on Tier 2 World. Do appreciate hearing your analysis. Thank you.